Good morning. In this video, I would like to share a little bit about covalent bonding. Now, we've already looked at ionic bonding, and in an ionic bond, when an ionic bond is formed, basically what's happening here is a metal is going to be transferring their electron to a nonmetal. And so when that happens, the metal becomes a positive ion because it's losing that negative electron, whereas the nonmetal is forming a negative ion because it's gaining that negative, negatively charged electron. Now, we talked about how, you know, that um, metal can have an ionic charge. Uh, it's related to the group that it's in. And if you need to review that, just review the ionic bonding video. Because in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about covalent bonding. Now, covalent bonding is um, a little different, well, significantly different than ionic bonding. Because when I look at a covalent bond, basically what is happening here is I have a nonmetal And that nonmetal is going to bond to another nonmetal. And so basically what we're talking about then is this side of the periodic table, that right side, that nonmetal side of the periodic table. Though when those are going to bond together, um, that then results in a covalent bond. And there are a couple examples of what this um, looks like. So we're going to work through maybe three or four different examples. But probably one of the biggest things that's happening here is where, you know, in an ionic bond, you have that nonmetal kind of grabbing that electron, stealing that electron from the metal. In a covalent bond, you'll actually have uh, them share. And so each one of those can benefit from having kind of that sharing of electron between the, the two atoms. So let's go ahead and do um, a quick kind of example here. So if I have a hydrogen atom and I want to, you know, bond that to another hydrogen atom to form a hydrogen molecule. Well, you know, hydrogen, if I draw the electron dot diagram, has just one electron. And for it to be full, it needs one more electron because remember that first shell only holds two. So if I draw another hydrogen atom there, what those can do then is they can both share those two electrons. So it becomes stable because it has then a full shell. And so the bond that's formed between those is the sharing of that electron, so those, both of those electrons. And I can put it there as kind of a circle. And then what happens is that circle when I draw out the structure, forms a line, and then that would be a hydrogen molecule. Now it's not, we don't call that a hydrogen compound because it's just one element. It's one, two of one element, so it's a molecule. So remember, a molecule can have two different, you know, can, can have two atoms but a compound needs to have two different atoms, you know, two atoms of two different compounds. So let's go ahead and do um, uh, some examples of those. And so an example of a compound then could be say like water, so H2O. And so then let's kind of, let's start with our atoms. With our atoms there, I'm gonna have one hydrogen 
Actually, I'm going to have two hydrogens. So let me go ahead and draw both of those. And then I'm going to have one oxygen atom. So oxygen is in group six. So it's going to have six dots around it. And then when I bond those atoms together in order to make it into the molecule, it's sometimes helpful for me to arrange those so I can get my circles um, to work out on those as far as their sharing goes. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my oxygen again. And I'm going to line up my hydrogens so I can get my circles, which are going to show the sharing of those electrons in that molecule. So then when I go to draw the structure of that molecule, I have my hydrogen, I have my oxygen, and I have my other hydrogen there. And that then is my water molecule. So if I want to kind of draw my hydrogen there, another hydrogen there, and then my oxygen there, that is the structure of that molecule. Okay, let's go ahead and do another example. Now, this one is just a um, molecule and not a compound because this is going to be oxygen molecule. So let me draw my atoms again. So I draw my electrons going around that. And then I have my other oxygen atom. And again, I draw my electrons going around that. And then I want to line those up so they can share. So I draw my oxygen. And my other oxygen. And then I'm going to use my circles to represent those being shared. And then as I write, you can see this actually forms a double covalent bond because they're actually sharing four electrons between the two oxygen atoms. So that one would be a double bond on each of those. Let's go ahead and do one more example. This one will be carbon dioxide. So that would be carbon dioxide. So CO2 would be the um, example I want to go over next. So I have my oxygen and I draw my six electrons. I have carbon, now carbon's in group four, so it's only gonna have four dots. And then I have my other oxygen here. Again, with six dots. And so I'm gonna bind those together. And again, I might have to kind of rearrange them um, a little bit in order to get them to kind of all fit. And so I'm going to put my oxygen here and then carbon and then my other oxygen here. And it's going to be kind of hard to get these to line up, but there would be one bond there. There would be another bond there, one bond there. And I can connect those kind of with a squiggly line there. So it's kind of looks kind of messy. But what I can see here is I have my one oxygen double bond to the carbon. The other side of the carbon has another double bond with that oxygen. And so on here, you can see I have two double bonds to each one of those um, examples there each one of those oxygens. And so where when I was doing the ionic bonding, I used an arrow to show that transfer of the electron. When I'm doing 
covalent bonding, I want to use a circle because they're actually sharing those electrons, okay? So that is kind of a good explanation of what's happening in those covalent bonds, how those electrons are being shared and you know, how that then allows for that molecule to be more stable than it would be if it were just an atom. So if you have any questions, as always, please just let me know.